Joining us now in a CNBC exclusive is Hilton CEO Chris Nassetta. Welcome, Chris. Good to see you. Can, hey, can you Sarah. Just, thank, thanks for having me. You're welcome. Can you just expand a little bit on, on the demand you see from here on out? Yeah. Um, listen, right now, what we're seeing is strength across all our important segments. Leisure travel in the quarter continue to be very, very strong, both from a volume and a pricing point of view. Business travel uh, uh, made its way back, finally, uh, from a volume point of view, uh, to above peak levels of 2019, and pricing is, is quite strong. And then meetings and events, which is, you know, circa, you know, 16, 18 percent of the overall business, but an important part of the business, um, it, the pricing structures are good. It's not fully back to 19 levels, but building very, very quickly, that's a longer um, lead time business. So we expect later in the year we'll get back to 2019 yeah. levels of, of overall demand. So, you know, mm -hmm. broadly, you know, very, very, str very strong results across all segments. Business travel, which you mentioned. I'm curious what you're seeing there more granularly in the in the tech and finance industries, which we've seen pullbacks. On, on costs. Have you seen a plateau at all in demand from, I would think, our pretty yeah. critical sectors on business travel? Yeah. Um, and if you break business travel down, as I said, it was back over 19 levels, but the makeup of it is different. Um, the majority of it, 85 percent of our business travel is now small and medium-sized enterprises. That's up from about 80 in 2019. The big corporates have been, you know, have not recovered to prior levels. Some of them have, but broadly because of technology, banking, and consulting, um, they've been under uh, 2019 levels and have plateaued a bit because of those three segments. If you take those three segments out of business travel, you're continuing to see big corporate travel actually increase. We were with a bunch of our biggest wow. customers, you know, a couple weeks ago in New York listening to them and what their travel needs are. And they were broadly, again, with the exception of those segments, they were broadly signaling higher demand for, for business travel. So, you know, that, that feels pretty good. And we've been very um, purposefully shifting our mix to SMEs. It's a higher rated business. It's more resilient. And as I said, it was already 80% of the business pre-COVID. Now it makes up a larger percentage of it, I suspect. Um, it will be that way, um, you know, for an extended period of time because, you know, we're that, we're going to choose to do that. What about tourism, Chris, and, and international tourism specifically, inbound to the U.S., outbound to the U.S.? It, it feels sluggish, and especially markets like China, now that it's reopened to the U.S., it we're is, still it seeing is, it, such yeah, low rates, It is sluggish. Right? It's, it's not, it, it's back to about half, half the levels of 2019. If you, if you lift way up, and say in a in an environment that is clearly slowing and uncertain, why do we keep you know posting better and better results? I think there's there's sort of three three things going on. One, there's a lot of pent up demand, particularly for business travel and meetings and events. That's that's creating a big tailwind for us. Two, there's a secular shift in how people are spending. So they may be spending somewhat less money than they did over the last couple of years. But they're spending it more on experiences, travel, the types of things that you know require hotel rooms than than they were before, and that's a sec, you know sort of a secular shift that has picked up steam and had been happening pre-COVID. And the last thing is to your to your comment is international travel. The reality is we're probably only back to the half of uh, half the levels of inbound international as compared to 2019. Part of that has been. The world hadn't been open, particularly China. China is now opening, but it will take some time to build that business back to get flights in and out, as well as into other markets. The other thing, you know, there there is a, a significant, you know, I, I also my, you know, at, at my night job is I'm the chair of the U.S. Travel Association, and the wait times associated with getting visas from countries that that require visas is, you know, into the hundreds and hundreds of days, and wow. so it's very difficult. Um, for many of these travelers who do want to come here to get here. And so we've been working with the administration, um, you know, and the State Department to try and, you know, reduce those wait times. But I think, I think there's a tremendous amount of upside potential in international travel over the next six to 24 months.